Hello, everyone. This is Sita Priya, Assistant Professor of CAC at RMB Institute College. In this lecture, we will be seeing one of the raster building pieces in its life, geometry and function. So, data analysis. Data analysis is not similar to the general term of data analysis we use in computer science. In GIS, data analysis is uh, different from the general data analysis. So we will see about data analysis, what is mean by data analysis. So these are the different types of uh, subtype or feature class we will be referring to. So if you are having a spatial data, or single spatial data will not be uh, formed or mapped by using a single term or by using a one time process. So to form one actual real world uh, spatial data, it takes a lot of uh, subtypes, a lot of feature class to be analyzed and combined together to form a real world data. So, in this case, the first subtype is called as customer service of people in the spatial data. So, majorly, uh, spatial data uh, is considered in two types one is vector data and raster data. In vector data, we will be having three formats of data one is uh, point, and line, and polygon. So that three things is represented at the beginning. So the first part, uh, first subtype represents the point. The second one streets, that is a connection of points between is called as a street. So the next uh, one is a street. And the third one, uh, the vector format is polygon. So the third subtype represents about the polygons or po uh, parcels that is present in the spatial data. So these are the three subtypes we considered uh, till now. And we have analyzed about the next fourth one is about elevation. Elevation is nothing about uh, but the height data. So suppose we are having a mountain means uh, the mountain will be having a certain height from the ground level. To calculate the height from ground level to the tip of the mountain, that will be called as the elevation. So elevation will be represented in the color form. So when you are representing in the grid, so first the uh, first three things we saw about the vector okay, the next three will be about the grid format. So in grid format or the raster data will be in a format of grid or pixel format. So when you are representing the height data or elevation in your grid model, you will be using the color variation between the spatial data to represent height data. So in this image, you can see that the elevation, few will be in a gray color, few will be in a black, and few will be in the white color. So white color represents the ground level and gray color represents the average height from the ground level and the black color represents the peak level or peak height from the ground level. So by using the color variation only in grid format the height data is going to be represented. So the next one is the land parcel. Land parcel itself uh, here your green color represents the presence of uh, forest or trees, so blue color will be your river and brown will be uh, land parcels, but brown color represents some other type of land and the red color will be representing the other type of land. So the difference between the spatial data or the objects present in the present in the spatial data will be uh, represented using a different colors here. So finally, by analyzing all the five layers, the finalized, you are, you are going to finalize the a real world spatial data. So in GIS, this is called as data analysis. You're going to have multiple type of feature types or uh, subtype. And each subtype is going to have some amount of uh, spatial data. That is uh, kind of uh, different types of uh, spatial data in a represent representing format. So put together, everything is going to be analyzed. And finally, you're going to generally form the real world data. So this is called as a data analysis. So now we come to uh, what are the different types of raster data analysis. So in raster data, the types are local operation, focal operation, which is also called as uh, neighborhood operation. And the final one is zonal operation. So local operation. So to uh, talk about the raster data analysis, we know raster data. The spatial data is going to be in the format of grid or pixel. So this is how raster data will be present. The matrix or grid format will be represented. So in uh, considering under the local operation, so one of the type of raster data analysis, you're going
going to work on one particular cell. So in this example, you can see that in the black color shade is the grid I have selected for processing the data, or I'm going to analyze, or I'm going to do any process in the particular cell. So when you are going to work on that cell, you will be particularly working on that one grid cell, and you won't be considering, or you won't be depending upon the rest of the cell of the spatial data. So this is how local operation works. So we're going to work on the spatial data. Only one particular cell at a time you're going to work on, and you're not going to reside on any other neighborhood cell or any other cells present in that particular spatial data. We can also see the other example using the matrix. So uh, for simple, uh, you can see in the first example, so I'm going to have two matrix. I'm going to work on addition. So I'm going to add the same column and same row of two different matrices. So in matrix one, the first column, first row is four, and second matrix, the first row, first column is five. I'm going to add both the data. So four plus five equal to nine. So when you're going to work on the in each matrix, you're going to concentrate only on one single cell, and you're not going to work on any other cell. Similarly, you're going to add all the matrix grids uh, from the matrix. Coming to the next example, so here you are having only one grid cell or matrix, but you're having a function to process the data. So this is your final or result out uh, result matrix. So the first row and first column is 30. And the thing I want to do is I want to multiply the first row and first column with the function that is, uh, you're going to multiply with 0 0.3. So 30 is multiplied with 0 0.3, and finally the output is given as 9. Similarly, you're going to work on only one particular cell at a time, and you're going to multiply with it, and you're going to write the final answer. So this represents your local operation. And to summarize that, in local operation, you're going to concentrate, or you're going to work on only one particular cell at a time. After completing the that particular cell, only you will be moving on to the next grid cell, and you know you cannot work on two or more cell at a time in your local operation. The next one is focal operation, or uh, it will be called as a neighborhood operation. So in neighborhood operation, you will be considering the neighborhood cell of the particular cell. So in this image, you can see that the X, the grid which is marked as X is called as focal cell. Focal cell is the, that is a particular cell you're going to work on, but you cannot obtain the result by only considering the particular cell. You have to reside on, or you're going to depend on the neighboring cells also for getting the output of that particular focal cell. So this is the difference between your local and focal also. Local, you're going to work on only one particular cell at a time, but in your focal operation or neighborhood operation, you're going to have one focal cell, that is the actual cell you're going to work on, but you cannot obtain result by working on that one particular cell. You have to reside on the neighboring cells also for getting the result. Uh, one of the examples of neighborhood operation is, if you want to get the height data, that is you are going to work on elevation data, means you cannot reside on only one particular cell in your uh, uh, raster data. For that, uh, mountain means it is not going to occupy only one particular cell in your raster data. For it will be having few neighborhood cells along with it to calculate the height data. So this is one of, uh, example for representing your neighborhood operation. So neighborhood operation is going to have four types. The first one is rectangle. So this is the major one. So rectangle means this is a focal cell. The nearby P cross 3 grid is taken for as a neighborhood operation. So this grid depends upon the size of the uh, image that you are using. Uh, in this example, we have considered 3 cross 3 grid. But if the size of the image is greater, it can also go for 5 cross 5 grid or 9 cross 9 or 7 cross 7. So it depends upon the application you are working on or the size of the image that you are working on. So the first uh, type is rectangle. The second one is circle. Here, you are not going to work as a grid format. You will be having a radius for calculating the uh, circle measurement. The next one is 
annulus. The next one is annulus, which is going to have the same as circle. It is going to have a focal cell, but the actual nearby grids or cells will not be calculated. Okay. Instead of that, it is going to have the neighboring cells uh, beyond it. So it is also called as a donut shaped uh, neighbor, neighbor, or else it will be called as an annulus. The next one is wedge type. So here, uh, in this also, in both so, uh, circle and annulus, you're going to work on the radius for measurement. But also in which you will be having a focal cell, and only in one particular direction, you're going to have the neighborhood cell. In circle and annulus, you'll be covering the neighborhood uh, throughout or so in the surrounding. But in your which you're going to have a neighboring cell in only one particular direction. And here also, for the measurement of the width, we will be using the radius of So these are the four different types of neighborhood cells. So once again, to summarize the difference between the local operation and the neighborhood operation, in local operation, we will be working on only one particular cell at that time. We can, we will be working on all the bridges, but only after completing one particular cell, we will be moving on to the next one. In neighborhood cell, you are going to have a focal cell, which is the actual cell you are going to work on. But you, uh, you cannot obtain the cell by using the one particular cell. So to obtain the result, you are going to reside on the neighborhood cells for getting the final output. Uh, for, for this, I told the example of calculating the elevation of a mountain. Uh, and in a neighborhood uh, operation, you are going to have four types. One is rectangle, circle, annulus, and wedge. So this is one example, which is an uh, algorithm of machine learning also. In machine learning, we will be uh, came across a sliding window technology. In sliding window technology, it will be moving from one grid cells to the other. It also can apply for, it will be also taking two or three uh, grid cells together for processing it. So one example is here we have taken three cross three grids. So the center one is a focal cell and the nearby are called as the uh, nearby uh, grids are called as the neighborhood cells. So it will be moving from one row to the other uh, sequentially for, for analyzing the image or for reading the data from the image. So the final one is your zonal operation. The zonal operation is quite different from your local and focal operation. Here you're going to have two inputs. The first one is a zone, the next one is a value. Value means here the feature value. Uh, in your uh, spatial data, you will be representing your spatial data as by using your integer value. Particularly in your raster data, to represent your uh, spatial data, you will be having a numerical value for representing it. So in values, you can see that we have represented many uh, spatial data by representing the integer value. And here, uh, the first matrix is about zones. Zones in sense, uh, if one means all the one represents single type of zone, two represents single type of zone, and three represents the same type of zone. So here, you're going to have map between two matrix, but matrix alone two matrix, but it represents same land area. So zones represents a particular land means the feature types present in that particular land will be represented in a grid format. So you're going to compare between the, these two matrices and they're going to obtain a final result. So how you're going to map means, first we take zone one. So first we'll consider zone one. So uh, the next one is your zone cannot be in a continuous format. It is also will be in a uh, separated one. So here two and three zones are in a continuous format, but one first zone is in a separated one. So, but even though it is separated, if it is represented using a common integer value, it represents, it belongs to a same zone. So first we start with zone one. Zone one, you are going to see for what are the feature types or feature value present at zone one value. So zone one, the feature values are one, one, and two. The round, uh, you can see uh, it has been round, uh, 
marked there. So in zone one, we have three feature values. They are represented using the uh, ident uh, integer value of one, one, and two. Among these three values, we are going to uh, we are going to see for the majority of the values. So here the major one is one because one is repeated twice and two is present only once. So the major value between one, one, and two is one. So you are going to make all the zone as one. So in the output, you can see that the marked area two is represented as one in your output. So this is how your zonal operation work. You are going to work on one particular zone first. In that particular zone, you are going to see for feature value present. In feature values, you are going to compare or you are going to take the major value. You are going to mark all the feature values of that particular zone as the major integer value. So in our example, the major value is 1. So all the three are made as 1. The major 2 already, uh, the above 1 are 1 already. So in the below, you can see that the third uh, value of zone 1 is 2. But after considering the major value in output, we made that as 1. So this is how zonal operation works. We'll also see for the next one. So in the next one, your zonal value 2. The zone 2, you're going to see for what are the elements or what are the integer present in the zone 2. So zone 2, the major value, you see for the major value here, there is 3, 3, 3. So 5 times 3 is present and 1 time 2 is present and 1 time 4 is present. So of course, we know the major value here is 3. So in that particular zone 2, you're going to make all the integers as 3. So you, all your feature value will be becoming as 3. It means that you are going to make everything under one single feature type. So here you are, uh, you, are, you had three types of feature. There is the two is one type of feature, three belongs to one type of feature, and four is another one type of feature. But when you are working on a zonal operation, if it relies on same zone, you are going to make the major value as a single feature type. So the next one, zone three. Zone 3, you are going to see for what are the values or integer present in zone 3. So here the major value is 5. So the feature type 5 is made as a common one in that particular zone. So this is how your zonal operation works. So we saw about how data has been, uh, data analysis has been used in GIS or how data analysis is, uh, works in GIS. After that, we saw about the types of raster data analysis, local, 